Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another International Sunday School lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the standard lesson commentary. Don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. Theme for this quarter is examining our faith. This is the third lesson in Unit 2 of our spring quarter. All the lessons in April is focusing on the measure of faith. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, April 21st, is taken from Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 39, skip to 44 through 50. Lesson title is, faith of an anointer before we go into our lesson we will have pray lord thank you thank you lord for your forgiveness thank you lord for the forgiveness of our sins now lord help us help us to forgive others as you have uh, forgiven us help us lord to uh, be kind and loving to our neighbors as you have been kind and loving to us. And we say thank you. Bless every listening ears. Cause hearts to receive. Bless every teachers. Continue, Lord, to give strength, to give courage, to give understanding. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This lesson is outlined and it is divided into two sections. Section 1 will deals with three people, and that's verses 36 through verses 39. Section 2 will deals with different actions, and that's verses 44 through verses 50. Aim for this lesson is that we identify what save the woman, that we compare and contrast the mindsets of Jesus and the Pharisees and the woman, that, that we evaluate his or her own mindset in the light of those three. Before we go to our printed text, we will just add a little bit of background. And so by now, our words have been spread Words had gotten out about uh, Jesus' uh, ministry, his performing of miracles, his teachings in the synagogue, healing the sick, among other things. We, we learn back in chapter 5, around verse 17, that some of the Pharisees and religious leaders, they came from every village. Far away they came uh, to, to see about what Jesus was doing, to investigate. And, you know, we know that uh, when the Pharisees and those religious leaders follow around Jesus, they, they never have anything good. There was not never any good motive for them to do so. It was always following him around to find fault, to investigate, to see what they could find him doing, violating uh, the Moses law. And Jesus, who is all knowing, he would know ahead what's in their hearts. He would know uh, their bad behaviors, their uh, bad intentions, and would he would accept the invitations anyway. He used these invites, these invitations to teach, to to teach these oppositions about the nature of the Father's kingdom. And so as we go into our printed text, I will see how, while Jesus was uh, dining with the Pharisees, how this woman, uh, who is known as a sinful woman, how she showed up with an uh, expensive oil and anoint Jesus's feet. We see how as time goes on 
and the story unfold how this woman, this grateful a woman, how her attitude was contrast to the self-righteous Pharisees. We see uh, the setting uh, shows us a formal hospitality versus an overflowing love. We see a self-worth through righteous living versus a self-worth through forgiveness. We will now go to section one and it will deal with three people. That's verses 36 through verses 39. Verse 36, reading from King James Version. Verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Again, uh, while they were dining at the Pharisee's home, Jesus was met by uh, this woman, this sinful woman, who uh, showed up because uh, it said she heard, she knew uh, that Jesus uh, would be there, and so uh, she showed up. And in those, in, in those days, uh, these events, uh, the door would be typically uh, left open, so anyone could just wander, wander around, could just easily walk in and come to listen to the conversation, what was going on. And uh, this woman, who is known as a notorious sinner, entered for uh, the sole purpose, purpose of seeing Jesus. She was not invited. She was an invited guest. This a sinful woman seems to have been on a personal mission with a personal goal in mind to meet Jesus. Verse 38, And stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anoint them with the ointment. And, you know, when we think about these, these kinds of setting, we can just imagine how tense this event must have been for this woman. Remember, she's known as a notorious sinner. So we can just imagine how uh, they already, already deemed her to be a, a, a sinner. But as we uh, can see right here, this woman didn't care about what they, what they thought about her. She was on a mission. And this right here was a, one of those rare opportunity. And she was not going to allow judgmental religious leaders to discourage her from getting help. She was determined to express her love and appreciation uh, for Jesus. And so question, like this woman, are you also, are you uh, determined not to let religious practices or man-made rules or legalism get in your way of serving Jesus? This woman right here was labeled as a sinner. And uh, traditionally, in their days, traditionally, it would be taken to mean that uh, she was some kind of a prostitute or something that was openly known that she was doing, that uh, they make it a big sin. 
But you know what? In God's sight, sin is sin. There is no big sin or little sin in God's sight. Sin is sin. And sin separates us from him. And that is why every last one of us needs forgiveness. Nobody uh, is given any uh, free card to get in with little sins. No, sin is sin in God's sight. That's why none of us have any room to judge anyone. Verse 39. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And we see here how uh, the Pharisees start, started to judge, the judgmental. They uh, saw the sin of this woman, whereas Jesus saw her love for him. Washing uh, his feet with her tears and wiping it with her hair. Jesus saw the love that this woman was showing for him and the appreciation that she showed for him. And so question, have you ever been reduced to tears uh, in Jesus's presence? And if so, how did it make you feel after being vulnerable at Jesus's feet? Because, you know, uh, Jesus' feet represents forgiveness and release. It gives us that release. It gives us that relief of what we're going through. When we humble ourselves, being at Jesus' feet is another way of saying we humbled ourselves and we give him all that we got. And, you know, uh, if we notice here, uh, this woman here was not concerned about what anyone else uh, might see or think. And we have to also take on that same mindset. As Christians, we have to have that same mindset that uh, when it comes to serving the Lord, we can't be worried about uh, what who is thinking what or who is saying what. We have to uh, make up in our minds and be determined that our uh, past does not uh, mortgage our future. Jesus and Jesus alone can help us and that's all that should matter to us. We will now go to section 2. It will deal with different actions in the verses 44 through verses 50. Verse 44, And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she had washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. 45, Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. 46. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint. But this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. And here again, we see how Jesus, uh, he was exposing uh, the Pharisees, their hearts, what's in their hearts. You know, what's in our hearts will always come out. Whatever we have lodge in there, that is how we will behave. And that is why uh, this woman who is uh, known to be a sinner, we constantly see how she is coming out ahead. She's coming from the place of heart. She's doing things from her heart. And Jesus here is, is showing uh, Simon, the Pharisees, of his neglect. He neglected to wash Jesus' feet. He neglected to even extend it, uh, some guest uh, courtesy, which was uh, a standard for them. He was so busy uh, paying attention to uh, the sinful woman that he didn't even do what was uh, the norm to extend uh, hospitality to his guests. And when we think about 
uh, the Pharisees and the religious leaders, they didn't, they didn't have respect for Jesus. They didn't see him as uh, the, the Messiah. They didn't see him as anything but someone that they could follow around uh, to trap into saying or doing things that they would deem to be against uh, the Moses law. That, that was their whole goal. And again, a Jesus who is all knowing, he, he oftentimes use these a setting to bring understanding. He uses a stories, parables, uh, he analogies. He uses different things to bring understanding. And so uh, if we go back to uh, verses 41, uh, he used a parable again to bring understanding. And verse 41 says, There was a certain creditor which had two de debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50 pence, 42. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And Jesus here used this parable to explain the connection between God's forgiveness of someone and their love for him. The parable is straightforward. It's about a money, a lender who forgives two debtors. The, the man who all more loves the money lender more. Simon the Pharisees was the rich one. So, and, and we can say that because he, he was able to afford a banquet. And in his position, he would understand that that forgiveness of that loan, that uh, it would imply something far deeper than a merely uh, forgiving a loan. He uh, would understand uh, that no one uh, just forgive such large debt without a greater uh, connection. And uh, the story that Jesus told here, it is uh, related to their present interaction. Jesus uh, would be the money lender. Instead of money, however, uh, the debt is forgiveness, recompense for sin. Simon uh, the Pharisees would be the man who owes a less because a Simon would think that his sin is less than uh, the sinful woman because of his religious law keeping. So then the one who owes more would be uh, the sinful woman who, who knows uh, her situations and knows how uh, the public views her. So she would be the one who owes more. So therefore, in her uh, grati gratitude to Jesus, she would lavish him uh, with her love and with her gratefulness. This woman she knows her sins and she sees her needs for Jesus' forgiveness. Whereas Simon the Pharisees did not see his needs for forgiveness. In his self-righteousness, didn't see his needs. All he sees was to point his finger and to judge. But again, in God's sight, sin is sin. And it caused separation. So everyone needs forgiveness. Verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. What is Jesus' point here? When we know when we realize the depth of our sins, it uh, should cause us to appreciate the complete forgiveness of God's offer, his offer 
for forgiveness. Jesus I told this woman right here in verse 48, and he says, And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. We should be very grateful to the Lord for what he has done for us. When we think, when we think of the depth, think of that depth of our sins and how the Lord rescues us from eternal punishment, eternal death. We too, we like this woman, we should be uh, very grateful uh, to what he has done for us. And so uh, here's the question. How, how grateful are you for God's mercy and forgiveness? This a woman here was brand with a name. What was it? A sinner. It's, and Jesus himself even said it. She, she was a, a sinner, which are many. Her sins were many. So that was a, a brand. That was her name. But we see how a Jesus, he showed uh, the magnitude of God's forgiveness and uh, the gratefulness of its recipients. The, the, this woman was grateful. And again, we have to be grateful for what the Lord has done uh, for us. Because uh, back in the um, parables in verse 41 and 42, uh, it lets us know that neither of uh, the person could repay the debt. So uh, he forgave them both. None of us can re ever, ever repay a God for what he has done for us. And so like this woman, uh, the least we can do is show him our appreciation. The least we can do is, ex is to express our gratitude uh, to the Lord. And again, uh, when we understand the weight, the weight of our sins, of which uh, the Lord has forgiven us, that uh, should help us to understand this woman's uh, love towards uh, Jesus. And so question, what would you say is the danger of not acknowledging our sins as many. Because, you know, for one, uh, we may be tempted to think that our sins are not as many or they're not as big. And thus, that makes us uh, more righteous. But again, sin is sin in uh, God's sight and sin separates us from him. That is why all of us needs forgiveness and that is why all of us needs to be at Jesus's feet, to humble ourselves and to tell him thank you. Verse 49, and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? So uh, Jesus, he spoke directly to the woman, but it was meant also for all of them in that room to hear it. Jesus already knew what they were uh, thinking about him. He knew what uh, they had in their hearts. In their hearts, uh, they believed that only God could forgive sins. So, of course, uh, they had uh, issue, uh, issues with Jesus saying uh, that uh, this woman's sins are, are forgiven. They uh, did not understand or did not want to understand that Jesus uh, Christ indeed was and is the visible image of the invisible God. And this uh, inquiry that they had right here, this is vital where we are today. It's vitally important where we are today. Because who do many say Jesus is? Do uh, many uh, where we are today uh, say, can Jesus forgive sins? You know, as Christians, we, we have to make sure. We better make sure that we hold fast uh, to 
the profession of our faith that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is who he say he is. Jesus Christ is God in flesh. Remember what Jesus said uh, to his disciples uh, back in John 14, verse 6 through 11. Jesus said uh, to them, verse 6, John 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Verse 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet have you not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say then, show us the Father? Did you hear that? Verse 10. Do you believe not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father who dwells in me, he does the works. Jesus, I hear, uh, made it very clear that he is the visible, visible, tangible image of the invisible God. He is the complete revelation of what God is. And Jesus, here he explained uh, to Philip that to know the Father is to know Jesus. And is to know Jesus is to know the Father. The search stop with Jesus. The search for God, the search for the truth, the search for any kind of reality ends in Christ. The Apostle Paul, uh, he puts it uh, this way in Colossians uh, chapter 1. Start looking at uh, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Verse 16. For uh, by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, meaning Jesus. There we have it. Back to the lesson, verse 50. And he said to the woman, thy, thy faith had saved thee, go in peace. And we see here how a Jesus a close of this argument with a two-part word. That is, first, uh, he clarifies the underlying reason for her forgiveness, her faith. What was the base of her forgiveness? Uh -huh, her faith. Her faith uh, was uh, the source of her love for him, her faith in him. And by uh, devoting herself uh, to Jesus, she surrendered her heart to him in repentance. And secondly, uh, Jesus told her to go in peace. And this is not the first time uh, Jesus uh, told uh, someone to go in peace after being caught in uh, sinful uh, actions. He also uh, told this to the adulterous woman. In John uh, 8 and 11, he also uh, told her to go and sin no more. And when we think about peace, and how peace can only come from God. Neither of this woman uh, would found any kind of peace if uh, they had not uh, departed with uh, Jesus' blessings. We can only find peace in Jesus Christ. In uh, John chapter 14 and verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, 
my peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is a Jesus' promise to us, to give us peace. And when are we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, this deep and lasting peace we will experience. Unlike this worldly peace, uh, which is usually defined as, you know, absence from conflict. Oh, there's nothing much going on. We have peace. No, Jesus is not talking about that. This peace here that Jesus left us with is that a confident assurance in any and every circumstances. With uh, Jesus' peace, we have no need to fear uh, the present or future. If our lives is uh, full of stress, only uh, the peace of God can calm us down. And that's a uh, part of what uh, Paul says in Philippians uh, 4 and, and starting at verse 6 when he said for us to be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There you have it. Everything that we need in God is in Christ Jesus. Our peace is in Christ Jesus. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. Our salvation is in Christ Jesus. Our forgiveness is in Christ Jesus. It's up to us to take hold of it and stand on it. And so as we close, uh, let's take a look at uh, the conclusion of the matter. Who needs forgiveness? And it reads, many unbelievers today are involved in unholy and biblical activities. Some even make their living doing things that Christians know are immoral. It is easy for those within the church to take a dim view of these people, judging them to be corrupt uh, sinners. But uh, this judging function bears little, if any, resemblance to the one used by Simon the Pharisees. His point of view was that of complete rejection, thinking of himself more highly and being confident of his own righteousness. But as Simon was not completely sinless, and as a student of the law of Moses, he should have realized that the Pharisees, just like Paul did, uh, he said that all have sinned and come short of God's glory. And another way to look at it is uh, to imagine a survey uh, being taken in the Pharisees, Simon's uh, village. The survey uh, question is, who needs to be forgiven, Simon or the immoral woman? The villagers would predictably respond overwhelmingly to the immoral woman. But this is really a trick question since it represents a false choice. It is not a matter of either or, but one of both. They both need to be forgiven of sin. They are both need a humble faith that would bring them to God with hearts full of love. They both need to follow Jesus, love God, and serve others. The tragic of this story is that only one of these people left the banquet forgiven. Mm -mm -mm. Simon's, the Pharisee's apparent pride in seeing himself superior to the woman block any realization of needing forgiveness. As Christians, we are to flee from sin and obey God. We show our love for God when we keep his commandments. But does this justify us when we reject and condemn those who struggled with sin? 
are sinners welcome in our fellowship if they are seeking to love Jesus or must they clean up their sinful lives before they enter the doors of our church? Jesus taught that even the vilest of sinners can be forgiven if they turn to him in faith and love. Are we willing to follow him in his love for sinners and help them as they strive to follow Jesus? And so, as we go through this week, let us have an aim to uh, be willing to follow Jesus, to extend our love and our help to those who are striving to follow him. Let us have an aim to have a welcome arms to those who are striving, who are struggling to follow him. Remember, we're all sinners who are saved by God's grace. And God has forgiven us and changed our lives, changed our direction, and we should want the same for others. Let us have an aim to reach out and give a helping hand to those who are striving to follow Jesus. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a thumbs up, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time, bye-bye.